Hey everybody, it's your buddy Beard Grizzly, and I've learned a lot over the past several weeks. The content I spent about two hours on is the stuff that's liked more than the stuff I spend over a hundred hours on. Uh, that feels a little off, but uh, here we are. Between working on some stuff in Destiny and the next major part series I want to produce, however, uh, well, let's just move on. I've been doing a lot of experimenting over the past month. I appreciate you guys dealing with me and letting me figure that out. With the new season out, Season of the Worthy, we have some new lore to look over with Destiny, so let's get into doing so. In fact, one thing that we'll start with sort of ties in with the rest of the season, or at least an underlying theme therein. Between the web lore and some of the lore entries, I see a couple of things that are commonplace as I'm looking over this new information. The first is about Europa, which we've had teased in the past. Europa, also known as Jupiter 2, is a moon of, well, Jupiter. Obviously, Io also fits this bill as well, and for even developmental reasons, like creating the game, going back to a skybox that's pretty much done and complete would make a bit of sense for a new region of space that we could explore within Destiny. But anyway, that's besides the point for a completely different video. Funny enough, both Europa and Enceladus, another moon we've heard a bit about from Cade and his journals, have similar situations. Yes, I'm gonna nerd out here for a little while. Just let me have this for a bit. I haven't done this in a while. Before I forget to mention it, Enceladus is a moon of Saturn, so they're, well, they're not even close together in space, but they do tend to actually have a lot of similarities between each other, which is also kind of the funny part. Both moons have been thought of for life existing underneath their heavy ice crusts. It's estimated that Europa may have ice as thick as about 10 to 15 meters on the surface, while still having areas of rock, sediment, and so on. And Enceladus is thought to be almost mostly just ice. No rock almost at all visible for it for the couple passes of Voyager 1 and 2 that have been made. The major difference is how each moon looks. Take for instance all the pockmarks you see all over Enceladus in this image. Yeah, those are craters, of course. Europa doesn't have a lot of those, or really any visible craters at all. It's smoother than Enceladus, which could give us an idea of how old the moon is compared to its icy counterpart. In fact, Enceladus might be quite a bit older compared to Europa, but that gets into some different theories. Of course, these guys are leagues apart, distance-wise, but they both have the same general fascination for today's astrophysicists. The possibility that life on either of these moons could exist is truly fascinating, and with the snow gear that we have from Warmind and Destiny, well, cold might have been a pretty common environment for Clovis Bray back in the days of the Golden Age on more than one planet or moon. Both also seem to have cryogeysers on them, and this is important as it shows the core of these moons, though cold and covered in ice could have some movement underneath their icy surfaces, churned by the core of the moon. There could be some heat that's in there, even if it is light. It's all just theory right now, of course. There are a couple probes that are planned for, I think, 2022 and 2025, but for the time being, things are kind of up in the air as far as what's going on with these things. Of course, that's our solar system for you. It's fascinating how much you could actually dig into if we could ever get out there. Ugh, the thoughts. Anyway, I'm not sure where I'd be able to bring up Europa again, so that's why I figured I'd nerd out a little. I could do more, like the moon's general construction and so on, but I think I'll leave things there, and maybe we'll come back to this at another point if they do talk about Europa down the line. Just know that Europa is spoken of a lot in the new web lore for some other Clovis Bray installations that could house some of Rasputin's old tech. That's pretty fun, and I think it's a good tie-in and actually makes sense narratively. The other piece is about the Vanguard Dare, which is something I'm sure we might see come up again as the season goes by. One hounding issue for the city and for the hunters that like to return to it every once in a while is the replacement of the Hunter Vanguard. Uh, yeah. It's been over a year, and a new appointment of a Hunter Vanguard leader has yet to be made. We keep seeing some pieces that could hint at different members of the Hunter's veterans being appointed, but the Dare needs to be honored. And so far, nothing has pushed any Hunters to possibly take up a Dare. I covered the Vanguard Dare in some content about a year ago. In case you're interested and are unfamiliar, I'll leave a link and move on. 
I hope it helps. One thing that might be an issue for the other Vanguard members of Ikora and Zavala is they don't want to let go. Ikora has sometimes sunken in terms of conversations about Cade. It's a tough conversation for her to have, even at this point in time, and though Zavala doesn't want to show it, well, it's tough on him as well. The new ship, called NS-81 Reprisal Sprint, talks about these feelings in a conversation with Amanda Holliday. How's the Warbind effort going? Amanda asks, elbow deep in the guts of a jump ship. She can't see Zavala, but she knows it's him. He visits her here sometimes, when things are quiet, hands her tools, talks about the early days of the city, makes jabs about how he remembers when she was yay high. Well enough, he says. He sounds tired, but he always does now, ever since the Red War. We'll make it through this. We always do. You sound like Cade, she says, smiling, optimistic, almost nonchalant. When Zavala doesn't say anything, she crawls out from under the ship and wipes her hands on her pants. A lot's happened around here since then, huh? She says, searching his face. The tower's seen a lot of changes, some new faces. Old ones as well, Zavala says, looking over to the place where Saint-14 usually stands. Amanda nods. Hard pill to swallow, she says softly. But some people can come back, and others can't, Zavala says, almost too quiet to hear. They don't say anything. Amanda wipes her eye with the back of her hand, leaving a streak of grease across her cheek. You've earned a break, he says abruptly. Maybe something to eat. Maybe ramen, she says immediately. She doesn't have to think about it. Zavala smiles, sad but warm. My thoughts exactly. The comment about ramen and that being their choice of food. Well, <laughs> I still have my old expired ramen ticket. Never forget, I guess. I knew that Ikora was having a tough time with Cade's death. Zavala was always the rock in a lot of ways. He tried to be the foundation for the very emotion-driven warlock vanguard, to make sure she could always vent. But he knew his place as the commander of the vanguard, and ultimately the one in charge of city defense as well. With Zavala's number one, Sloan, being on Titan, he's needed to handle most of the city's functions on his own, along with, of course, Guardian movements, Titan movements, and his other duties as vanguard commander. But of course, he's had a little help from Ikora and, of course, from some of the other functions within the city, like the foundries and so on, which we don't hear too much about at this point. I kind of wish we had more info on that, but oh well, this'll do. The inference is enough for me in some respects. Again, I do wish there was a bit more, though. But it's been a bit hard to pin down a new Hunter Vanguard for a few different reasons. I feel we could get into that conversation at another point altogether, but I do want to read over this part of stolen intelligence for now, just to get your gears moving. I'm sure we'll come back to the turmoil of the city another time. This is from the entry entitled Instability from Stolen Intelligence, a book from Season of the Drifter. 2. Regarding the open hunter vanguard position and the terms of Cade's dare, the situation is unprecedented. Were we to trace the chain of culpability back to its first link, I believe we would be obligated to elect a hive god to our council. Our current inclination is to caucus with the hunters to debate the benefits of opening the position to any interested and well-qualified hunter. Such a debate is, of course, contingent upon the continued existence of the vanguard itself. We will make an effort to convene the hunters as soon as possible, but this group should be well aware that most credible candidates have fled the tower in anticipation of such a debate. If you've read the recent entry for Tommy's matchbook, <laughs> then you know where this is going already, and things are getting worse around the city because of it. Because of the inaction of appointing someone, or trying to fill the spot at all, or trying to move on and let things be. It's been tough on the city overall. Cade's death is still felt today. As far as an underlying piece of the world of destiny, this is always something that I think on. Instead of his humor, it's more what he used to be, what he still kind of does for us. But it's nowhere near as impactful as I guess it used to be as well. I wish it were 
a bit more prevalent within the game itself, but I know the point is that we continue to move forward, regardless of what's happening around us, as the Guardian. In some ways, I suppose we're able to feel and act where the Vanguard cannot, to give hope to those that have none. That's something we can take with us through our adventures out the solar system. Or just back to Rasputin's Hobbit Hole to get more bounties. <laughs> Your choice on that one, I suppose. Anyway, I'll leave things there for now. Let me know what you thought of this little piece in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for future discussions, thoughts, rants, whatever I decide to do around here. And if you at least enjoyed kicking back for a bit, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. But regardless of what you decide to do, to all of you, no matter when or where you are, I'll see you next space time. Take care. <laughs>